please note that these questions do carry on. So here's point one and point two, point three and point four, and then point five. All right, so the sketch below shows the graph of um, this hyperbola. A is the point of intersection of um, the asymptotes of F. Okay, so this is where the asymptotes intersect. Write down the coordinates of A. Right, so that's quite easy. So we need to know what this does to a graph. Uh, let me make that a bit better, this part here. So we need to know that that X minus one, what does that do? It moves the graph one place right. What does this do to a graph? Well, that moves it two places down. So that moves it, moves two units down. So if you can imagine, the most basic hyperbola that you can ever get would have started at the origin. That's where the center would have been. But then you would have moved it one place to the right and two places down. So the coordinates of A would become one and negative two. The next one for five marks, determine the coordinates of the X and Y intercept. Very easy, hey guys, X intercept, make Y zero. Y intercept, make X zero. That'll never change, that's a constant rule that we can always use. So to find the X intercept, we make Y zero. So we say zero equals to negative nine over x minus one minus two. Now I'm gonna take the nine over with the x minus one so it can become positive. Then I just cross multiply. So I just multiply this x minus one up. It's almost like I'm getting a common denominator. So I end up with that. And then nine is equal to minus, whoopsie, what's going on there? Minus two x plus two. Then we're simply gonna solve for x, so if I take the two x to the left and take the nine to the right, then x would eventually equal to negative seven over two, which is the same as negative three comma five if you want. So for the answer here, you would say, don't just say negative seven over two, say negative seven over two, and then also give the y value, okay? Now we need to go find the y intercept. To do that, we make x zero, so we can say y equals to minus nine over zero minus one minus two, and so if we had to go work that out, we're gonna get nine minus two, which is seven. Okay, so the y-intercept would be zero and seven. Always give the zero as well. So what we know so far now is that a is one and negative two. This point here is minus seven over two and zero is the y-intercept, is zero and seven. This question, write down an equation of the axis of symmetry that has a negative gradient. So we know that, that hyperbolas have two axes of symmetry. You've got the one going that way, and this one always has a positive gradient, and it's always positive one, and then you've got this other one that goes that way, and this one always has the negative gradient, and it's always negative one. See how I've got a negative one there? You can fill in the one if you want, and then this one always has a positive one. That's always the case with hyperbolas. Now, they've asked us, write down an equation of the axis of symmetry that has a negative gradient. So they want this one, okay. So we can say that y equals to negative x plus c. Then to find c, you just plug in this point over here, which is one and negative two. So you can just fill that in. And so c would be equal to negative one. Okay, so this dotted line, I haven't drawn it perfectly. It was just a drawing, but if it's y-intercept is negative one, that's like here. So it probably goes more like that. Okay, so then the equation would be y equals to negative x minus one. For five marks, hence or otherwise determine the coordinates of a point that lies on f in the fourth quadrant, which is closest to point A. Okay, so they're talking about this point over here. So there are multiple ways that you can do this. Option one, which is the option I don't recommend because I think it'll just take quite long. Uh, but that's where you can literally take this new line that we've just worked out. We worked out its equation as this. And we simply substitute that into this equation. And that'll tell you where the two equations intersect, which would be here. And it would also be here. And that's what we would be looking for. However, 
the better option, okay, so that would be the simultaneous, or sorry, if you make uh, make the make y equals to minus x minus one equal to f of x. Okay, that's option one. Option two is if we remember grade ten. In grade ten, we learnt about hyperbolas, for example. So, like you'd have this, and you'd have this. And let's say they gave you y equals to 2 over x plus 4. Then we, ha we had a way where we could easily work out this point and this point. All that you did was you took the square root of this number. So you'd take the square root of 2. So then what would happen is that this one would be the square root. Um, okay, let's not worry about the plus 4 for now. So this would be square root 2 for the x and then square root 2 for the y. This one would just be also square root 2 but negative because the x is negative and then the square root y and the y would also be negative okay um and then for example if we had it in the other quadrants so maybe we have it in maybe we have it in this quadrant and this quadrant then this one here would also be square root 2 but it would have a negative x value you just got to sort of look at the dot and be like hey does that have a negative x or a positive x and then it would have a positive y and then this point over here would have a positive x and then it's got a negative y you see? And then, okay, so then if I um, had to say plus 4 over here, then that would move the graph upwards by 4. So what you would do to each of these points is you would just add 4 to the y value. Okay? And you just add 4 to the y value. Now, in grade 11, we can also move the graph left and right and up and down. Okay, so what we'll do is, okay, so to start off, to find this point over here, we take the square root of this number. You don't worry about the negative, you just take the square root of the 9. So that's going to be um, square root 9 and square root 9. Okay, but now that's not the answer. Now we need to do some modifications. First of all, this point here always has a positive x and a negative y. So we're going to make it the negative y. The x, we can keep it as positive. Next, we need to modify it. This thing has moved one place to the right, so I need to add one onto that. And then it's moved two places down, so I need to subtract 2 like that. And so um, if we had to go work all of that out, we should end up with 4 for this part because square root 9 is 3. And then this would end up being minus 3 minus 2, which is minus 5. So that's the option I recommend as it's a lot faster. But if you did want to use simultaneous, I don't think it would actually be that bad. You make this equation equal to that equation. And so that would be minus x minus 1 equals to minus 9 over x minus 1 minus 2. And then you would just go ahead and solve that over there. Okay. Now, uh, oh, that's the end of that one. Or that question. Now we still have another one. Okay, so let's just quickly summarize what we have so far. We know that this was 0, 7. We know that this was minus 3. No, this was minus 7 over 2, 0. Uh, we just worked out this point here is 4 and minus 5. And then we also knew that this axis of symmetry was y equals to minus x minus 1. And that's about what we have found so far. So it says the graph of f is reflected about the x-axis to obtain the graph of g. Write down the graph of g's equation. Okay, so we're going to reflect it across the x-axis. So um, we're reflecting it across the x-axis. So in general, if you have a point, let's say this point is 2 and minus 1. No, that wouldn't make sense. 2 and 3. And let's say this is your x-axis. If you reflect something across the x-axis, the x value stays the same, but the y value switches. It becomes the negative. So what we do is we write down this equation, the original one. Then you switch the y to become a negative because we said that's what happens. Okay, so what we do is we just make the y a uh, negative. So I just wanted to rewrite that again, um, like that. And then you're just gonna get the y by itself. So um, you're just going to divide everything with a negative. So this all ends up becoming positive, like that, you see? So, um, so it all just becomes positive like that. All right, and that's the end of that question.